Hey, GP winners. So thank you for joining us today. And I'm joined by Dr. Mike Smith, who's going to be talking us through how you can use QR codes to make adding information to pharma outcomes for your COVID vaccinations so much easier, so much quicker. Um, thank you for joining us, Mike. How are we doing today? Doing really well, thanks. Really well. Cool. So can you explain to us kind of what the problem is with using pharma outcomes and that kind of stuff? Because I know it's um, been a bit of an issue for some people, hasn't it? It has, yeah. So uh, as those who have tried pharma outcomes will know, it's it's not a terrible bit of GP software, but it's not the best by any means. And one of the biggest bugbears is getting patients onto it because it's not linked to your natural clinical system. You have to manually add every single patient who comes through the door. And when you're trying to get through thousands of patients very rapidly, it's not ideal to have to slow things down. It adds extra challenges as well. I'm just going to share, share my screen for a second. Um, and you'll see that when, you, when you're adding a patient, you have to enter the date of birth. But naturally, the way you would enter your date of birth would be, you know, 25-5-1986. And you think that's great. And it goes, oh, no, 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 that's not acceptable. It has to be 25. You have to go back. You have to have a dash, not a slash. You have to type in the word, um, but the first three letters of it, and then another dash, and then it finally accepts it. And then you have to do the NHS number, um, the same. So if you're trying to do that rapidly from maybe a separate bit of paper, um, it, it does slow things down, and you can one one fat fingered error, and you slow up, and you have to go back to the start again. So when you're trying to get through patients in three, four, five minutes, it, it you're spending a minute, a minute and a half adding the patient on this isn't ideal. So what some practices are doing and PCNs are doing is to manually add all the patients ahead of time which can take admin te admin teams up to six seven hours of, of time to do one one day's worth of patients so it's a huge amount of time wasted and uh, hopefully we've got a way around that cool so why don't you show us this amazing solution we've got so what we've what you do to get started is um, you'll need to download um, some some files from a website called GitHub. GitHub is an open source hosting platform. So you, all of the code for all of these files is completely open and transparent. Um, and it's completely free to you to change and update as you want it. So if you've got any concerns about it, have a look at the code. If you can, ask, ask a friend who might. But similarly, if you want any changes made, you can submit requests and we, we're, I'm constantly improving it. So what you would do is download the code from here. Um, and you it's often easier to download as a zip file. So if you click on download zip, it will download it in your browser. And then you've got a zip file that you can then open up and extract. So I'm going to show the file um, and I'm going to, so I'm extracting that. I'll just, so you've got your extracted file and then you've got the folder that's been downloaded. So in the folder, there's a, a dummy CSV file, which I'll explain in a moment what that's for. And then there's a, the main file to get things going is index.html. So that is just a web page. The whole thing runs from a web page that's stored on your computer. Nothing is in the cloud. Nothing is remote. No data is transferred off site. It all runs on your computer. And it's an HTML file, so it opens on every computer. You don't need to have any special software. As long as you're able to download the file from GitHub, then it will it will work. Some CCGs or, or, or IT providers might block access to things like this. So you may have to run on a personal device um, to do that. But it, it, hopefully they, they do allow access to this because it is a useful resource. So just a quick question then, Mike, um, will that yeah. work in any browser as well? Um, it works. In, it, it, it's best in Chrome. It doesn't work in Internet Explorer. Um, it probably I've not tried it in Edge, but it probably will work in Edge. It, it does work in Safari. Um, mm -hmm. It does work in Firefox, but it, it has to be one of the more modern browsers. It won't work in Internet Explorer. So if you if you are set up for Internet Explorer, when you want to open the file, just right click on it and then open with and then select a different browser rather than Internet Explorer. So I'm going to open it in Chrome here. And you'll see a page that looks something like this. So it contains the instructions for how to do it, a link to a video demo of how it works, um, and this bit in the middle, which is convert your list. So what we do here is upload the, the CSV file of the patients that you've got coming into that vaccine clinic. So every every area will do this differently. We use AccuBook, so we can there's a single click download, and that can just be straight uploaded into this. If you're running it from System 1 or from EMIS, then you may have to export it to a CSV file. You might need to manipulate the CSV file a little bit. Just the only thing that is really essential is that the patient's name column is 
the word name and nothing more than that. All of the other columns, it'll try and figure out. So if you've got NHS number with a space, it'll, it'll understand that. The crucial columns to include are NHS number, name, date of birth, and the name, because those are the things you need to register the patient on Pinnacle. But you can also add the session, the session date and the start time. So that can be useful for, for the people on your front desk who are gonna be sorting these slips of paper. So I'm going to start by uploading uh, the dummy file, which is there. Uh, so you can test it yourself with a dummy file before, which has just got fake patient information. It's not none of the none of it is real patient info. Um, and when you upload that file, it will automatically bring you to this page, which it basically launches a, a ready to print, and you can just press print on your printer, and it'll print them out um, for uh, to two by two on um, on A4. Then what you'll have is some um, some pa a paper sheet which you can then cut out into little slips and those slips you can give to the patient when they come to your to the, the slips you can give to your patient when they arrive they you can choose when we if we go back a screen you can choose to sort the the csv file as you, when it's being uploaded so you could sort it so that it's in order of the csv file which is what we use because that's the order of the appointment time and reception found that that's the easiest way to, to, to sort the bits of paper. You can similarly do it by surname alphabetically. That might be useful if you don't, if you, if you can't get the session time onto the CSV file. So once you've, what, what happens then in the clinic is the patient gets handed the bit of paper, which has got their name on it. So it's very easy to verify the patient's ID when they turn up in front of you. And then you would then open Pinnacle and you get your trusty barcode scanner, which we've been sent hundreds of um, without requesting them. And you can then quickly scan the date of birth and it nicely inputs it in the format that Pinnacle wants and the NHS number, which is again uploaded in the format that Pinnacle wants. And then you just press look, press look up the patient. This is a dummy patient, so it obviously won't look them up. And that's it, you're on your way. And you can then, then go and do the rest of the actual proper work of vaccinating the patient and then recording the, the, the rest of the details in Pinnacle. Now there is one other approach you can do for this. So the demonstration I've given there is using these little slips, which wastes a lot less paper than printing every patient in a, a full A4 sheet. But what you can do is equally, you can upload the CSV file and choose, sorry, is choose full page format. And when I upload the dummy patient file, you'll see this time, it decide, it's going to print out a full A4 sheet with the QR codes again to make it quick to enter, but also the questions you would generally want to ask about you know consent, about the patient, the, the, the possible contraindications, the time and the date, the batch number. You can fill all those in on a bit of paper. So you've then got a paper backup ready to go. So if you some sites I understand are doing it entirely on paper and then subsequently adding it to Pinnacle. And sometimes certainly for housebound and care homes, it's useful to have it all on paper where IT might, the internet might not be as reliable. So this is just an alternative approach if you want to do it that way. For the actual clinic, we found that because with the barcode scanners, it's so quick to scan the patients on and get them registered on Pinnacle, just do it as you go and don't actually go back and um, don't go don't go back and, and try and do it on paper first. And that in, that in essence is the whole thing. It's, it's a very simple little tool, um, but hopefully it could save many hours of administration work and also just general frustration with the, the boring bits involved in the vaccine program. Absolutely. And he takes down something that potentially takes from what, about 30 seconds to a minute down to about 10, 15 seconds by the looks of it. So, you know, I, I'd probably say it's got about a minute, a minute to 10 seconds. So it, it is not, uh, to be honest, the, the time saving doesn't sound dramatic when you think about it as one, but when you multiply mm -hmm. it by a thousand, it makes a difference. But it's also just about that psychological frustration of just not having to wait for that really unnecessary step. And I guess there's also that element of making sure you get the right information as well. So you don't get the, the missed, you know, the, the wrong date of birth added in and that kind of stuff, you know, hopefully should reduce the errors. So making the whole process potentially safer as well. That's my yeah, opinion. absolutely. Because when, you, when you've got, you know, you've got 90 year olds in front of you, some of them are very frail and, and some of them may well have memory impairment. So them having a bit of paper speeds up the process. All you have to do is verify is their name and then, and then say, is your date of birth this rather than mm -hmm. having to say, what is your date of birth, which can sometimes be a slow process with a with a frail 90 year old awesome thank you for that mike has been really helpful i know loads of people have been asking for ways to try and speed up you know this logistical challenge that all of us are facing with trying to deliver the vaccine to our populations as quickly and as effectively as possible and i can definitely see the the real benefits of trying to make this help 
a lot quicker and stuff. Um, if people are interested in having a look at the files as I showed earlier, so all the files, links to the files and stuff are in the show notes down below, as well as timestamps if you want to check particular parts of, of this particular video. Um, and I just want to say thank you, Mike. It looks awesome. And I know you keep, as you said, keep updating this, so it should be live and always ready to use for people as well, wasn't it? It did, yeah. There's constant tweaks made. If you've got suggestions, I'm happy to make amendments to make it work even better. I hope it's helpful. Absolutely. So thank you, everybody. Hope you found this useful. And definitely let us know what you think in the comments below. Catch you later. Thanks very much.